Greetings and welcome to the Sunday edition of the Soul of Wisdom, our often anticipated, never duplicated Sunday discussion. And we say never duplicated because we change it up every Sunday. Yeah. Always something different. You just heard a voice in the background on her triumphant return from several days in hell. <laughs> <laughs> the God voice producer wife, Beth. Hi. Hi. Are we feeling better? Yes. The show missed you. I missed it too. I managed to, you know, stumble along on my own. But nobody tunes in to listen to me. It's, it's all about you, babe. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, I managed to keep the numbers up for like a couple of shows, but then Fridays was just kind of a dud. So I'm glad you're back. I think a lot of people started traveling on Friday, though. We're going to blame it on that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. So what happened on Friday? Well, the big obvious thing? Yeah. The written house. Oh, okay. It just felt like there was like something really big, so you know. Is that when the how the house passed the build back Biden bill? Yeah, that happened too, and a couple of other things. But I think the biggest thing was probably the written house yeah. thing for sure. So this President is... got a colonoscopy. Oh yes he did. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So there was actually it was a big news I guess on Friday, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we got uh, we got a not guilty verdict, a big spending bill, and a good look at Biden's ass. Yeah, what more can you ask for on a Friday? <laughs> oh, good heavens! So, we thought we would switch gears just a little bit on this lovely Sunday, um, and kind of go off script from what we normally do. We normally don't delve too deep into the political kind of things. And I don't necessarily feel like this needs to be a wholly political discussion, but I do feel the need to talk about the whole Rittenhouse thing. Okay. But uh, from a slightly different angle, perhaps. Okay. I don't think we need to debate necessarily his guilt or innocence, because I feel like that's already been debated. Um, I'm more interested in the public's reaction to it and kind of how we're working within this system that is the United States. Okay. That's my bigger, bigger concern. You? Yeah. Okay. So in case you're the one person tuning in who has not heard about this, Kyle Rittenhouse, the, uh, gentleman, young man who killed two people and injured a third in Kenosha uh, was found not guilty on all charges. Uh, the jury felt it was self-defense. And I don't particularly care at this point whether or not that was the quote-unquote right or wrong decision. And I feel that for one specific reason. It is not for me or the producer wife or the president or the guy who lives two doors down from us or the people we know back in the Midwest or some dude in Saudi Arabia or anybody on this planet to determine other than the 12 jurors who held his fate in their hands. Yes. But that isn't how we seem to be treating anything lately. No. So, I'm not going to pull this up on screen because, quite frankly, some of these people, I don't want to give them the publicity. But there's some things I want to read to just kind of set the stage for this. First of all, when Biden was first coming out of his, uh, his slumber for his colonoscopy, he issued a statement that just said something to the effect of the jury has spoken and I respect that. That was a good statement for a president to make, in my opinion. He then later issued a revised statement that said in part, while the verdict in Kenosha will leave many Americans feeling angry and concerned, including myself, we must acknowledge that the jury has spoken. So he expanded on it a little bit. Yeah. Had to add in the whole feelings of anger and concern. Yeah. A quick trip through Twitter, which is always a joy. Yeah. Uh, somebody named Chrissy Stroop says, 
Just saw the news alert about Rittenhouse's unconscionable acquittal. Not surprising, but certainly depressing. I'm ashamed of America's systemic racism. The verdict is every bit as much an expression of white, r r white wing, I can't even say it, right wing, <laughs> white supremacist dominance as January 6th. Now a quick look at Chrissy Stroop. She is from Portland and she is the co-editor of a book called Empty the Pews, Stories of Leaving the Church. A new movement warns how religious extremism threatens democracy. So we know where she stands. Uh, some dude named Mackenzie posted a meme. This is from the other side of the rhetoric. Uh, there's a black kid by the last name of Simpkins on the left side of the meme, and it says, Shoots four in a school, freed within 24 hours, bail 75,000. And now on the right, a picture of Rittenhouse. Shoots three in self-defense, two plus months in jail, bail $2 million. So he's spinning it from the other side. The reality is they're two separate cases. Yeah. With two different things going on. Yeah. In two different states. Mm hmm But whatever. Bubba Wallace. Ever heard of Bubba? Yeah. Yeah. The NASCAR driver. Yeah. The one who thought there was a noose. Yes. That was just a pull for the garage, garage door. Mm -hmm. He tweeted, ha, let the boy be black and it would have been life. Hell, he would have had his life taken before the bullshit trial, dot, 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 sad. Okay. All right. Another meme. On the left, Kyle Rittenhouse, 17 years old, carries assault rifle, kills, injures three people, not guilty, vigilante. On the right side, a picture of Trayvon Martin, 17 year old, carries bag of Skittles, walks in a hoodie, killed by not guilty, vigilante. Alrighty. Some girl named Bella. I'm going to edit the language on this one slightly. F the jury, F the judge, F Kyle Rittenhouse, F this system, Black Lives Matter. Let's get it going, you know the drill. <sighs> yeah. I, I don't. So there's a couple, there's one thing I want to share here in a second that is kind of interesting. But first of all, the rhetoric coming from our president, for him to, initially his statement was good. Yeah. Jury, let's respect that. But then he had to add on this addendum of, you know, you may be concerned and so am I and saddened and shut up. Angry. Angry, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. Obama did the same thing with Trayvon. And he gets up there and goes, if I had a son, Tray he'd look like Trayvon. Why? Yeah. There is, from, from the top, first off, they are inserting themselves into these things, which honestly they have no business inserting themselves into. Correct. Period. Um, you know, and, and it's all, it's all to be divisive to score points with your tribe. Yep. I don't, I don't have an opinion on the Rittenhouse thing other than the jury found him not guilty and that is good enough for me. And it's good enough for me for this reason. I watched much of that trial, or at least listened to it as I was working. So I, I absorbed a lot of it, but I was not there. I was not part of that community. I was not handed any of the evidence where I could physically hold it and see it and everything else. I was not in that courtroom to read any of the members of this event as far as the prosecutor, the defense attorney, Rittenhouse himself, the judge, none of it. I had no, no access to any of that. The 12 jurors who decided his fate did. And they took longer to decide his fate than Derek Chauvin's case, OJ Simpson's case, um, the 
cop who was uh, found guilty of shooting the one in the apartment. Oh, the Brianna one? No, no, not the Brianna one. The one where the the girl the the she got a hug from the the brother. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember the name. But there's all these high profile cases that have come in and out quicker than that. So they put like work and effort into this thing. And they did what they were supposed to do. Now you can say that our system is broken and our system is skewed in one way or another, all these kinds of things. You have to recognize, in my opinion, that there is no perfect system no. anywhere. No. Do you, but I don't know of a place that's doing it better than we are. Do you? No. I, I can't for the life of me think of one. I can name a lot of places that are doing it much worse. Yeah. But that's just it. You know, you're never going to be... First of all, you're never going to be 100% on anything. <clears throat> and you're most certainly not going to be making 100% of the people happy. Which is why I feel like the people should be more focused on... Did the system work the way that it was supposed to as far as you seated a jury of his peers, they took their time through the evidence, they apparently put thought into it, and they reached a conclusion that made the most sense based on what they were given. Yeah. I feel like they satisfied those things. I agree. But you would, you would believe that they did not if you read through any of the news or if you've seen any of the news, you would, you would believe that Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist, even though there was zero black people involved in the charges that were levied against him. Zero. Yeah. It was white on white the yep. whole way. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there was actually a, um, I forget the, the organization, but a news organization over in the UK has actually been reported reporting that he shot black people. No, he didn't. Yeah. So this, this wasn't a race thing as much as they wanted to play that narrative. Yeah. But... That's definitely been a huge part of the narrative all along. No, it has. There's this narrative that he crossed state lines with a weapon. No, he didn't. No. The weapon was already there. in in Wisconsin. Yep. Now we can debate whether or not that weapon was purchased legally, whether or not it was a straw purchase, as they say, and that is actually being charged right now. The the friend of his who ended up buying the weapon is being charged for a straw purchase. So we'll see where that goes. But but it was not illegal for him to hold that weapon. And they actually, towards the end of the trial, got that charge thrown out yep. because the defense found it in the law that, no, he could legally have it. So he did. I don't know. What's interesting, too, this was one I was holding back. I want to read this because this gets zero press anywhere. The same day, Friday. Have you ever heard of a gentleman named Andrew Coffey IV? No. Okay. Andrew Coffey IV is a resident of Florida. And back in 2017, he was involved in a shooting with police. There was a raid on his house. SWAT team members and Coffey exchanged gunfire. Okay. Coffey's girlfriend was hit by 10 rounds in that exchange and she died. Wow. They charged Coffee and two of the officers with her death. Two of the officers had the charges dropped by a grand jury. Coffee's charges were not dropped. He became the sole defendant. Same day, then this is a black man, okay? Same day, a jury of his peers found him not guilty. Now, you would think that that sort of thing is impossible in the United States. Yeah. Based on everything that you're reading about how there's this different, there's this different system if you're a white man. Well, no, there's not. 
Now, in fairness, he still does have one charge that he has to answer for where he was not found not guilty, and that was possession of a weapon by a felon. He has four previous felonies, so he's going to have to answer for that. Yeah. But he was found not guilty in that shooting. Now, how did that happen? Because it's not supposed to, right? Hypothetically, I guess. Yeah. So I don't... I don't know. It's... It's this, this tribal stuff, this rhetoric, this back and forth of... You know, it's, it's justice if these social conditions are met. But it's injustice if these social conditions are not met. That's... But, but this black dude doesn't even get play... Because it doesn't fit the narrative. And I agree with that. That's what's being said. But I don't even believe that's actually true. And I don't even believe the people who say it believe it to be true. And I'll tell you why. Because there probably would have been more rioting had he been found guilty than if he was found not guilty. Interesting take. Why do you think that? Because when Chauvin was found guilty they like blew up and torched everything again that's fair <clears throat> that was the conclusion that they they quote unquote wanted and they still rioted so if they were getting what they want why loot and destroy more things yeah. i don't think it has anything to do with getting a certain outcome i think it has everything to do with complete anarchy you know, I think that's what's being pushed. It's just not being said that that's what's being pushed. Well, it seems that way. I mean, you've got, you know, you've got liberal pundits after this thing started crying. Why? Yeah. The system did what the system was supposed to do. Now, you can agree or disagree with the outcome of it, but the system works. That's more important than anything, quite frankly. You, you successfully seated a jury. They saw all the evidence. By the way, this, this judge who's taking so much heat for how he handled the case, he's a Democrat. Yeah. That gets no play, but he is. Yeah. Dude is a Dem. And... Well, they also eat their own, so... Yeah. They don't care if it doesn't yeah. fit the collective narrative. But he also has a history, I've, I've read this in several places now, he has a history of doing everything in his power to make sure that defendants are treated fairly. So why should it be different with Kyle than how he handled everybody else? Yeah. You know, but he's, he's taken all sorts of heat, and that doesn't make any sense to me. But, but again, you would think that that there was this miscarriage of justice based upon the way that the, especially pundits on the left, are reacting to this. And and I think you're right. I think it's just, just stoking division. It's anarchy, as you put it. They emptied a Louis Vuitton store in San Francisco. Oh, I didn't read about that. Interesting. Completely emptied the entire thing. After the verdict? Yes. Well, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It wasn't the only store that was hit. There was like a whole bunch of stores in that area, but the Louis Vuitton store was completely emptied. Meanwhile, Kenosha, where this actually happened, has been fairly quiet. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of demonstration here and there, but they're not burning the city down. No. So but perhaps they, actually they declared, learned their lesson last year. When they actually they declared it a riot, like actually used the word riot in Portland. <laughs> where the one tweeter was from. Yeah. Interesting. But the news was actually saying it was declared a riot. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it, there has to be some acceptance, in my opinion, that if you are <clears throat> going to be in this country and you're going to be a citizen of it, you have to accept a couple of things. You have to accept that not everything is going to be perfect by your definition. And that's going to be the case because everybody's going to have a different definition of perfection. You can't make everybody happy. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to accept the fact that even when the system works, you might not see the result of that you want. But you also have to, at some point, step back 
and just respect the system and let it do its thing. Because right now, I mean, you can go through Twitter like I did just with those few tweets, and that's that was a few out of tens of thousands. Yeah. You can you can go on Twitter or Face Space or where the hell else you want to go, and you can play this this keyboard jury kind of game. But again, the truth is, you weren't there. You didn't get the access to the evidence that all these other people you got. You didn't get to read the room. None of it. These people did. Respect what they did. And here's the thing, too. These were 12 civilians from the community. Essentially, just normal nobodies kind yeah. of people, you know? And I got to believe that they did a better job of working with the law and coming up with an outcome than any of our current elected officials from either side of the aisle would have done. Personally. Yeah. Because ultimately, you know, this is, this is what the founders of the country set up was this system to allow for a fair proceeding with the right to be tried by a jury of your peers. And then we're all supposed to respect the outcome that they come up with. Yeah. Think back to OJ Simpson. There was a whole bunch of people across the country and it's still to this day say, you know, that, that result was bullshit, but I've always respected it because that's what the jury said. Yeah. And ultimately they're the decider of the whole thing. And you notice they didn't burn the town down that night. There wasn't rioting after OJ? Not after, no. Okay. No. Maybe it was because that one fit the narrative at the time. I don't know. Maybe. But no, they weren't they weren't burning the place down or anything. Now, he a, a lot of a lot of the result or what people believe it was the reason for the result in that trial was the Rodney King stuff, which happened before that. Yeah. A lot of people feel that the jury, this was like retribution for that. Yeah. But, but again, that was a separate incident. It had nothing to do with him specifically, with the outcome of his case or anything. I don't know. I guess I, I wanted to have this discussion today just a little bit and just to try to talk through things some because I'm, I'm disturbed that so many of us want, on either side, want to rush to some kind of a conclusion, some kind of a judgment on this is right, this is wrong, this is fair, this isn't fair. It's mob mentality. That's what has been being shoved in our faces for years now with this canceled culture and everything else, and it's... It's complete and utter BS. It is, and more and more people, I think, need to grow up and snap the hell out of it. Yeah. Because this doesn't serve us. <clears throat> if you think that things don't work well now, wait a while. Yeah. If we keep walking down this road, wait a while until the systems that we do have are completely blown to hell, and then see how it works. Yeah. Again, if the country is so bad, I've said this before, if the country is so bad, why are so many people trying to get here all the time? It's true. Why? Would you want to run <laughs> into a fire? No. So if the country is some kind of dumpster fire, which we've we've joked about before, that it's, it's like a jumped dumpster fire, but ultimately, even for the problems we have, this is still the place to be. Yeah. Okay. So do, do you honestly think that... The people who are coming up on our southern border and stuff would enter the country if they didn't feel that they would be treated with some kind of justice well yeah it's better than what they have exactly so why are we bitching about it all the time why is it that if something doesn't go our way are we such spoiled brats that we throw hissy fits why well, again, it's mob mentality, yeah, but in a lot of these cases, and it's been proven and time and time again, but 
in a lot of these cases with the the riots and the demonstrations and everything people are being paid to be there so there's people who are purposely out there stoking this to get this result <clears throat> we got to be smarter than this yeah we really do or again if if we don't figure out how to be smarter than this if we don't figure out that our system is not broken as people would have it be i'm not saying it's perfect no there is no such thing but i wouldn't call it broken either let it do its thing is there corruption in spots sure there is there isn't everything yeah all right is there things that could be fixed sure but not the system as a whole little bits of it here and there like if you have a bad prosecutor you get him out if you have a judge who is showing some signs of corruption you get them out that's tweaking the system in spots it's not blowing it up just because this dude got off and you liked that and this other dude got off but you didn't like that so now all of a sudden the system sucks yeah people are short-sighted too it doesn't take much for you to end up in Kyle's spot someday. It really doesn't. For any of us, it's just a series of a couple of unfortunate events in a row, and you've got a really bad day. Oh, look at the McCloskeys. Yeah. Yeah, the McCloskeys are a good example. They had people marching outside their home. You can agree or disagree, but they chose to go outside armed to tell people to get away. Because they were on their property. Because they were on their property. And, you know, they didn't ask for these people to be there, but they were there. And then all of a sudden they're facing charges and hatred and everything else. Yep. But again, just a couple of steps away from a really bad day. That could happen to anybody at any time. Yeah. Just think when you're driving your automobile. You know, what if... Um, what if something distracts you and heaven forbid while you're distracted by one thing something else happens and you kill someone that's a really bad day that you probably didn't intend on yeah but you've still got to deal with it and at that point you want a system that's going to do its best for you yeah but if we continue to blow this thing up and not respect it and demand that it quote unquote changes then God help you when you get into that point. Yeah. And here's a question, okay? Everybody says the system needs to be changed. I have yet to see anybody tell me exactly what it should change into. I hope it's not the anarchy on the street because that's not justice. No. But am I missing something? No. Because, because... Clearing you know, out the Louis Vuitton isn't justice either. No. But you, you see it all the time. Uh, you know, like... Colin Kaepernick, for example. The system needs to change. It's unjust. Okay, Colin, change into what? Get out your big brain. Tell me. Yeah. And let's debate that. I'm open to debate. I'm open to ideas if you've got something better. But nobody can ever present anything better. They can only tear down what's here. But where's, you know, where's, where's the good in that? Yeah. I don't know. It only leads us to a very dark place. Yeah if we continue to uh, act the way we act. I don't know. I guess I'm begging and pleading at this point for people to slow down, stop living your lives in social media. You know, you and I were talking earlier about how, how we're not addicted to social media. We don't, we don't rush to it for everything. We don't seek our answers there. No. And maybe sometimes that's to our detriment because as business people social media needs to play a role in what we do but we don't instinctively go there no so you know from that standpoint maybe we should get a little better but but like these these tweets that i read earlier okay i didn't get those tweets because like oh i wonder what twitter has to say about this i went there just because i was curious for show material what it was they were saying yeah i didn't once look up what anybody was tweeting about no. kyle after the verdict no i don't care no but but that's where everybody is rushing and it yeah. is just destroying us and everybody tries to one-up everybody else too because they want their moment of glory but everybody seems to be willing to sacrifice their own decency and 
self-respect for that moment of glory. Everybody wants to be snarkier than the person before them. Everybody wants to be just a little bit cruel, more cruel and crass and everything else. And it's like that. I feel like we're in junior high. That doesn't make you cool. <laughs> no. And, and I will say that's coming from both sides too. Oh, okay? it is. So back to the Bubba Wallace tweet mm -hmm. where he's like, uh, you know, if it'd been a black boy it would have been life. All right. The first, <clears throat> first reply up to that tweet is from Matt Walsh. Matt is not exactly known as a left-leaning dude. No. He is very right-leaning. And his tweet was, remember when you lied about a noose in your garage? Okay, is that really helpful? No. No. <clears throat> no, I don't. I mean, that's... that's Matt the, is snarky, too, though. No, I know. Yeah. But that's that's the other side not helping anything. Ted Cruz does the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's no. he's a big one with the I'm gonna try to get my digs in. Yeah, no, he really does. But he doesn't get as much play as like Trump did, for example, with his tweets. But yeah, well, don't have to worry about Trump's tweets anymore. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. We need to just get out of our own damn way. I've I'm old enough now that I remember how things worked and how they work now. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, if you're younger than uh, years old, okay, this isn't how it's supposed to be. No. Now, I'm not saying it's supposed to be perfect. It's not. It's never, never has been. No. And you're right. If you look back through our history, all these people who are saying, well, we had this problem in the past and this problem in the past, and there was slavery and there was this and there's that. Yep, you're right. And if you go to any other country on the planet, they all have their own black eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? They all have their own skeletons in said closets. They all have their own dark history. And many of those countries still have slavery. Yeah. Yeah, like China. Yeah. But we don't want to talk about that. Oh, no. So this this idea that we are somehow not good well there's no such thing as perfect but again if we're bad why is this the place everybody tries to come to but if people are so see there's a difference between being upset and wanting something to change and being upset just for the fact of being upset and i feel like people just want to be upset to be upset because, like you said, nobody has ideas of how they can fix things. And if you want to have some righteous indignation and say this is wrong, then work to make a change. Going out there and burning down a Wendy's is not helping you. It's no. not helping your neighborhood. It's not helping the cost of goods. It's not helping the people who are employed there. It's not. It's just more destruction. Destruction doesn't help anything ever. No. No, it doesn't. And and tell me that those people who go back to the Wendy's, you know, because Baconators are racist or whatever, I don't know. No, I was thinking but, of the Atlanta thing. No, I know. Okay. I know that's where you're going. But to go back to that, okay, I can't believe for a moment that the people who burned down that Wendy's suddenly felt better about themselves afterwards. No. I can't believe that they went home and went, the demon has been released. I can go on about my life now. No, people who are that rage filled tend to continue to yeah. act on those impulses. Yeah. Well, you know, you and I were talking about this earlier too. I forget what it was in reference to, but we were, we were talking about the need to have some kind of control over your darkness. Yeah. And the fact that, in my personal belief, I think the majority of people have some level of darkness in them. But you have to seek out the light. Yeah, and you and you have to learn to control that. Um, you know, it's 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 not good enough to just go, I'm angry, and then just go act on it. You have to say, okay, this makes me angry. But it's not going to be healthy for me to go out and 
do these things. So maybe I need a hobby. <laughs> or, yeah. Or I need to talk to somebody or something. You have to take some kind of of ownership over your yourself in your own situation. And it feels to me like until you've mastered yourself and your own mind, that kind of leads back to exactly what right is it that you have to be commenting on what happened in the Rittenhouse trial? Yeah. You need to get your own shit together first. Yeah. <clears throat> you do you, and once that's figured out, then maybe you've earned the right to have a thought on this other thing. That's part of, honestly, during all the riots that was infuriating to me was the people who were traveling to other cities to riot. It's like they knew it was destructive because they didn't want to do it in their own city. They wanted to go and destroy somebody else's city. But how messed up is that? Yeah. You're just leaving a mess for the poor people that live there. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff still isn't cleaned up. Well, no. Because in a lot of areas it's still going on. I don't know. But at least some people in San Francisco have Louis Vuitton now. That'll make its way to eBay. It's probably already on yeah, eBay. I know. It probably is. <clears throat> I don't know. I, um... Again, I'm just, I'm... I, I don't even know if concerned is the word anymore. I'm... I don't know what the word is. It's... Again, I don't feel like anything in the last, let's just go back since 2000, okay? Last 20 years. So we'll take some of the younger generation coming in and all of that. I don't think there's anything that's happened in that, that time span in these young people's lives, the ones that are out doing, in large part anyways, doing some of the rioting and the protesting, things like that. I don't think that anything horrible has happened in this country to justify a complete and total disregard for how the system is and how it should work. Now, are there issues that we can work on? Sure there are. Can we debate whether or not, for example, that um, the way Wall Street operates is fair? We can debate that. Yeah. Okay. And we could reform that and things like that. <clears throat> but I've lived a decent long time now. And again, I remember how things used to be. And and I say that, it's not like I'm some kind of geriatric here, okay? Yeah. I'm still, in the grand scheme of things, a fairly young man. But, but old enough to know <clears throat> that this place is not horrible. If it was so horrible, how is it that a white majority population elected a black man president twice? Yeah. If it was so horrible, how is it that we now have a black Indian female vice president? Yeah. Again, with a majority white population. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I get your points about Wall Street and corruption in the system and all of that, but I still don't think that's the biggest problem. I think what has happened in, if you want to talk about from like, y2k on what has happened is social media and again we just you know heard about whistleblowers and facebook and all of those such things but i believe that those systems are designed whether they were designed to this result or not they're creating angry people and people who hate themselves when they get on social media because they don't have what everybody else has or they don't look like everybody else looks and they have so much pent up anger within themselves that this is how it's coming out in society. Yeah, and maybe it's maybe it's that coupled with kind of the loss of faith now too. <clears throat> oh yeah, that that's a part of it too. But but I think the the self hate is a big big factor. Yeah. Everybody's angry on social media. Well, that kind of rolls back to what I was saying earlier about how you need to fix you first before you can go worry about these other things. Yeah. <clears throat> but see, their social media god is telling them that 
they need to pay attention to all of these bigger, higher priorities before they can achieve their greatness and their rank and, you know, social media heaven and get the followers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I will say this. Again, I've talked a couple of times during this discussion about how I've lived long enough to know this or that or the other thing, right? <clears throat> so while I still refuse to disclose my exact age, figured out from the gray that you see in my beard, I will tell you that I'm at an age where more than likely there are less days ahead of me than there are behind me. And I'm okay with that. But... I will tell you that, and, and this is for anybody in their teens, 20s, 30s, this age group who's kind of more engaged in these protests and things like that. I will tell you that the clock that is spinning on your life spins a hell of a lot faster than you realize. You blink and it's gone. So if you are spending your time wrapped around this much hatred this much vitriol this much anger this much insert negative emotion here um you're gonna wake up one day and go holy shit yeah i just wasted it all and i'm telling you it will happen because i cannot believe i'm the age that i am at now yeah i i me could, too I think it happens to everyone. Yeah, I know, but it's quick, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it, it feels like just yesterday I was in high school. Yep. And But the truth is that was forever ago. Uh-huh. And, you know, all of a sudden I've got three grown children and a teenager. Yep. What? <laughs> but But it goes so fast, if you're wasting your time... On this much, this much negativity, I feel sorry for you. Instead, why don't you figure out a way to just be happy? And you go, you know what? I may not agree with what the jurors came up with for this reason, but doggone it, the system did what it was supposed to do, so let's be happy with that. And even if the dude is quote-unquote guilty... The old saying, it's better that a hundred guilty people go free than one innocent man go to prison. Yeah. And just accept that, take the win that the system executed the way that it was supposed to, and we all move on with our lives. Because if we can learn to do that, and we can get off all of this hatred and everything else that, to your point, is brought on by social media, then perhaps there's an ability to actually have some peace and we were building towards it too before we decided that we weren't yeah um you know i will tell you in my generation the vast vast majority of us we don't give a crap what color you are we don't give a crap who you sleep with we just don't care yeah we, we were over this decades ago yeah but if you want to make it a thing I, I suppose it can be again, but then we're just taking a bunch of steps back. So Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have much more to say on the matter unless you do, other than it is my sincere hope that everybody just slow the hell down a little bit. Find a way to be happy. Find a way to be happy. Find a way to, again, accept the fact that the system might not always work the way that you want it to or give you the outcome that you think would be most appropriate but it is still the best system in town. <clears throat> There's nothing better on the planet right now than what we've got here. There just isn't. Period. We've talked about this in another episode, but the idea that um, a lot of something begets more of it. So in this case, surrounding yourself with a lot of people that are angry and hateful is just going to make you more angry and hateful. There is no other outcome. So surround yourself with better people. Make good yes. choices. Yeah. Pick better friends. Absolutely. There's... And that includes social mm -hmm. media influencers and friends and acquaintances online as well. 
If you find yourself getting angry every time you look at somebody's feed, block them. Stop looking at their feed. Yeah. Don't put yourself through that. No. That's just it. Life's just, too short. Yeah, yeah. You're going to waste away the time that you have that will go faster than you think it will. That's the bottom line. All right, since we are a quote-unquote business-related podcast, let me swing this around to business just so we can say this was a business episode. Yeah, if you have a business, don't talk about this in the business. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring this up with people. Don't go there. Just focus on focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Because, again, this, this kind of division is just horrible. And if somebody wants to bring it up, don't let them. Just say the system did its job. You can discuss it when you get home. Yeah. All right. I hope all of this made at least a little bit of sense. If nothing else, I think the producer wife and I have maybe cleared our heads on the matter slightly. Hopefully you can clear your heads too, dear listener, and figure out a way to, as Beth put it, just be a little bit more happy. Yeah. And um, stop being upset about everything all the time. Because it will lead to it the destruction of all of us. Yeah. Yeah. But it will destroy you first. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, I think we conclude our Sunday discussion at this time. Uh, we haven't pointed this out yet, but please do like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell if you're on YouTube, hit the punchy thing on Rumble. Do all those social media things that we yeah. were just talking about. <laughs> do not all... doing... Well, that's a good use for social media, <laughs> though, to get to get the word out you know social media itself isn't horrible it's it's in how you use it like any other tool yeah it's it's kind of like a pew pew you know a pew pew by its own nature doesn't do anything it's it's the hand that's holding it yeah if an evil hand is holding the pew pew the pew pew will do evil things if a non-evil hand is holding it it will be fine yeah social media is no different it's all in how you use it. So if you're going to use it for good, please do share our show. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Rumor has it there might be some changes to our weekday format. We'll discuss it with you tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for listening. Please do consider uh, leaving a comment if you are on YouTube or Rumble. You can email us questions at soulwisdom.com, S-O-U-L-E wisdom.com, if you have anything to say on this matter. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.